Hey there, my name is Kat. Welcome to my yoga classes. If you've never taken one of my classes before, welcome. And if you are excited that I'm filming again, and you've been waiting for these classes to come back, then welcome back. Um, I did take a brief pause to stop filming because I am pregnant. That is my update for those of you who don't already know. Um, and I'm telling you that mostly just because in my classes from here on out, you might see some changes, some modifications, or the classes just might feel a little bit different than they used to. Um, so that's why they're different. And that's why I wasn't here for a while, but I'm back now. So welcome. And as always in my classes, take them at your own pace, make them harder, make them easier, take breaks, use them at your leisure, share them with your friends. And if you're enjoying these classes, then like, share, subscribe, do all those things that you're supposed to do on the internet. <laughs> and, uh, thanks for being here. Namaste. No rush whatsoever, but whenever you are ready. Slowly just finding your way onto your yoga mat. For today's practice, we will be doing um, a lot of groundwork primarily. We're doing a lot of stuff to kind of open the hips and work on some hip mobility. No major props needed today. Maybe just a blanket or just, you know, extra padding for the knees if you ever need it. But that's about it. And this is a 45-minute class, a little shorter. So we'll start with our meditation but we'll make it pretty brief. Finding a nice tall posture, maybe let the eyes close, dropping in right away to this meditation. Following the inhales and the exhales. Maybe just seeing if you can lengthen them a bit. And as you breathe, see if you can gently just scan the body, notice anything that feels tight. Letting any tightness or restrictions you feel, just gently soften as you breathe. Softening through the jaw and the forehead. The shoulders, the hips, palms and feet. Returning your awareness back to the breath. Maybe breathing in for a count of five. And exhaling for five. Just gently counting in your mind. Inhaling. And exhaling. Continuing this rhythm, and your five doesn't have to match mine. Just breathing in and out nice and steady.
And whenever you're ready, we'll start to begin our practice by gently opening the eyes. And coming right away into a tabletop position. So on all fours, gently shoulders over the wrists, hips over the knees. Good. And from this position, we'll just work on a gentle cat and cow. Spread the fingers, ground through the palms. Inhale, drop the belly, pull the heart through. And exhale, round the spine. Going at your own pace for this one. We're just waking up the body. Do a few more. Make sure we're staying grounded through the palms. And coming back into the tabletop position. From here, just step your right foot between your front two hands, coming into a low lunge. You just let your hands rest on top of the right thigh. Good. Now from here, I want you to think about engaging through the legs. So pressing down through the feet here. Think about squeezing the thighs towards the midline and gently just kind of setting yourself a little deeper into this lunge. Coming as far forward. I want you to think forward momentum, not down. As far forward as you can go, make sure you're not feeling any pain in the knee. And then gently ease up back to about 90 degrees in that front knee. Good. Use your exhale, guide you forward. Come as far forward as you can. And then gently squeezing back to center. Good. Going forward and back. Exhales are forward. Inhales are back. And our pelvis is staying nice and neutral here, even as we lunge nice and deep. We're not untucking the pelvis, we're just keeping, and we're not also, we're not tucking it super hard either. It's kind of a nice, neutral, natural pelvis. And this is just nice to kind of warm up the legs. You should be feeling this a bit in the quadricep, hamstring area as well as the front left hip flexor, maybe groin as well. Just do a few more of these. Good. Wherever you are, just come back to neutral and drop both hands to the inside of your right foot and scoot your right foot out towards the right. Good. Take your back knee and just kind of scooch it back until you're in a comfortable lizard lunge. Nothing too extreme here. We're going to add a bit of a twist. So reach the right arm up. Send the hips nice and forward and down. You can untuck that back foot and just take about five deep breaths here. In this, I'm letting my right knee really open away from the body, coming to the outer edge of the right foot. Good, take your right hand back down to the ground. From here, I just want you to take that right foot, flatten it on the ground, and kind of just walk it, scooch it forward until it's a little bit further past your hands. Send your hips forward once again. We're in kind of this deeper lizard lunge. Keep that right knee hugging in towards the right shoulder. Keep your hips and shoulders squaring to the front as best you can, and either stay up on the palms, might be better for this one, 
If you can, you can come a bit deeper by just walking your hands forward. If you've got a lot of space, you can, of course, bend into the elbows as well, bringing the forearms to the ground. Kind of staying in this nice wide lizard lunge for about five breaths. Hugging the right knee into the right shoulder. Right foot is flat on the earth. Good. Walk your hands back to neutral and just gently kind of walk that right foot back. Come back into your tabletop position. Take a few moments just to kind of sway your hips left and right and kind of swing them back towards the heels as well. Kind of just releasing the hips. And then we'll gently switch sides. So take that left foot between the front two hands and just come into that low lunge shape, hands to the top of the left knee. Now, if you did so on the other side, of course, always feel free to pad the knee anytime you need it here. Good, take a nice deep breath in. And with your exhale, kind of lunging as far forward as you can. Again, thinking forward, not down. Good, inhale back to neutral. Exhale, lunge. Taking this nice and slow, easy at your own pace. And this should not be feeling like pain at all in that left knee. Everybody's different, has a lot of, we might have a history of any kind of knee injury, so you might not want to take this so deep. But if your knee's feeling pretty strong and steady, you can push this as far as you are able. Staying connected with the breath. I'm just taking a few more of these. Good. Wherever you are, coming back into a neutral position and just dropping your hands down to the inside. Walk the foot over to the left. Good. And just adjust, maybe walk the back knee back just a little bit and send the hips forward into that lizard lunge. Let the left knee open away from the body, coming to the outer left side of that foot and reach the left arm up. Twisted lizard. Breathe. Thinking about drawing the shoulder blades towards each other on the back, so staying nice and open in the heart. Shoulders away from the ears. Pressing down through the tips of the right fingers, through the palm. And then taking that left hand back down. From here, just kind of take a moment to scooch your left leg forward until it's a little bit further. Send your hips forward and down once again. This time, hugging the left knee in. So foot is flat, knee towards the shoulder. Either just staying right here, if this is plenty to deepen, you can just walk the hands forward. Or of course, come down to the forearms depending on your mobility here. Staying nice and active, so keep squeezing that left knee in towards the shoulder and breathe.
Coming back up onto the palms or walking the hands back in towards the body. Just gently return your left foot back into that tabletop. Same thing as before, kind of taking the hips left and right and also swinging them back towards the heels, kind of just letting the hips be free here. Good. All right, from here, we're gonna to come to lie flat on our belly. I'm just gonna modify myself here so that I can actually do that. And once you're on your belly, come into your Sphinx position. And again, you don't need to do this with the blanket. This is just so I have room to lay on the ground without my belly <laughs> pressing into the earth. Good. So pressing down through the forearms, spread the fingers. Think about drawing the heart through, press the tops of the feet down. We'll take about five breaths here. Good. Now we're gonna come into a quad stretch here. So just take your right hand towards the middle, keeping the elbow where it is. Bend your left knee, take your left hand back, find your left foot and give that left foot a pull. Now there's a lot of variation. You can keep your heart opening more towards the side or you can square your hip shoulders more towards the front. And just kind of drawing the heel in towards the that outer left hip, you don't want to land it right on the glute, a little bit outside the body. Keep pressing down through the right forearm, active in that left leg. So kick the foot away as well as drawing the foot in. So nice and active through the quad stretch. Staying here for a few more breaths. And gently release the left foot and come back into neutral here and we'll switch sides. Take that left hand into center, bend the right knee, grab hold of the right foot. Option to either square off towards the front again or stay more facing towards the right, up to you. But do find resistance, so kick that foot away but draw the foot in equally. Another breath or two here. And whenever you feel ready, releasing it, coming back into that sphinx, and then just gently pressing yourself back into child's pose. Hips to the heels, extending the arms long. Come back into your tabletop position. And from here, we're gonna come into a 90-90 with our legs. So come to sit on your bum and take both legs out in front of you. I want you to bend your right knee, bring your right foot in towards your groin, and then just take your left knee, bend it and pull it back more towards your left hip or glute. So we're in kind of this 90-90 degree shape. Kind of turn so you can see a little bit better. 
Good. Now we're going to be coming up onto our shins. So if you need to turn or orient yourself somewhere on your mat so that you can do that without rising up onto a hardwood floor, <laughs> definitely advise doing that. Let's see what's best. Excuse me. <laughs> Good. Now, depending on how your knees feel, to make this a little bit less intense, you can kind of walk the feet a little bit away from the body. That should make it a little bit easier on the knees. Good. All right. So first things first, just sitting up nice and tall. As you inhale, squeeze, lift yourself up onto the shins. And then slowly start to lower yourself. Option, if you need help, hands to the ground to ease yourself into this. Remove some of the weight from the knees and legs. Good. As you inhale, come on back up. Squeeze the glutes, squeeze the quads. Exhale, lower. Nice and slow. Inhale, rise. Exhale, lower. Going at your own pace here, nice and slow. And again, the hands are here. If it's too intense, use your hands as you lower just to give yourself a little bit of a brace. Good. And make sure you're moving with the breath. Inhale, pulls up. Glutes, quads, active. Exhale, slow, lower. Try not to plop on the ground. <laughs> Good. Let's just do four more. Last one. And gently release it back down. Good. And then from here, just gently switching sides, pulling the left foot in towards the groin and the right foot pulls back towards the hip or glute. Again, make sure to position yourself so you're not gonna rise up on your hardwood floor. <sighs> All right, inhale, guide yourself up. And exhale, lowers. And you might find that positioning the feet or legs slightly differently might help you get into this a little bit more comfortably. Please feel free. You can always adjust. Keep coming up and down. Controlled, slow. And as you rise, make sure that you're squeezing active in those legs and glutes, good. And as you lower, staying active using your strength to slow that lowering. Let's just do two more. Last one. Good, and let's release that facing the front of your mat once again. Bring the soles of your feet together. Let your knees be open wide. Drawing the heels in as close as you'd like to your, um, to your body. Grabbing onto the feet, sit up nice and tall, lengthen the spine for a moment. As you exhale, fold into this, letting your spine round, let your forehead come towards your feet. As you inhale, sit back upright. And we're gonna come into a half pigeon pose. So 
With your right leg in front, bring it until it's parallel with the front of the mat, uh, your shin, that is. So kind of bending the right knee and walking the foot kind of away from the body until the shin and the front of your mat are parallel to one another. And then just take your left leg straight back, bending at the knee, creating this kind of 90, 90 degree shape with both legs. Good. Now, once you're set up here, Think about sitting up nice and tall. Maybe hands just rest on the shin or the ground and breathe in. And as you exhale, start to walk the hands forward, finding the ground in front of the right shin. Staying a bit active in that right foot. So kind of pressing that right foot into the ground and the right knee. So our glute is firing up active here. And then just continue to keep walking the hands forward, maybe coming down to the forearms or all the way flat. We'll keep this one going for a little longer here today. So just settling into this, allowing your body to soften wherever it can, maybe through the forehead and the palms. Nice and slow, rising back up. And once you're upright, you can gently switch to the other side. Draw your right leg back and your left shin parallel to the front. Doesn't have to be perfect. Anything that's comfortable. Good. And then from here, before we move anywhere, think about pressing that left outer left foot into the ground and the left knee in or towards the ground if it's not flat. Sit up nice and tall, breathe in. As you exhale, easing into this nice and slow, not rushing it, start to walk the hands forward. Maybe lowering all the way or just to the forearms or the palms. Pressing that left leg into the mat, relaxing everything else that we can. Nice and slow, we'll start to come back out of this, walking our hands back in towards our body. And from here, 
transitioning back into a tabletop position on all fours. Good. From our tabletop position, step the right foot to the outside of the right hand. Again, lizard lunge, send your hips nice and low. This time we're gonna add a quad stretch. So walk your left hand a little forward, flatten the palm, bend the left knee. Inhale, open the right arm towards the right. Find that back foot if you can. Give a nice big pull, shoulder blades towards each other. Heart rotating up towards the sky and breathe. And just like our earlier quad stretch on our belly, we want to find resistance. So that foot kicks into the hand and pulls the foot. So it's kind of activating that left leg. Good, release the quad stretch. Take your right hand back down to the ground. This time we'll let ourselves settle into this lizard lunge with our foot just as it is. You can let the right knee wander away from the body. Maybe come down to the forearms. Just about five or so breaths here. Coming back up onto the palms, take that right foot and walk it over to the left. We're gonna come into our full pigeon this time. So once the foot is over to the left, slow, drop the knee to the right, and just extend that left leg back, flattening it as much as you can, adding any support you might need here. I like to add support underneath my right hip. And there's a lot of variation, so don't worry if your lizard, or not your lizard, if your pigeon is a little different. I like to have my shin parallel to the front, but for some, the foot can be more back towards the hip if that's better for you. And settling into this, forearms, forehead towards the ground. We'll hold this one for a bit longer. So again, softening where you can, but staying a little active in that right foot. So the right leg pressing into the earth. Breathing deeply. Slowly come back upright. Coming back up to the palms and slowly making your way back into your tabletop, scooching your back knee in and just drawing that right leg back. And before we switch to our other side, take a moment to do some of those little hip wiggles. Kind of just sway it out side to side and take the hips gently back towards the heels as well. And then let's switch it out. 
From here, take that left foot to the outside of the left hand. Traditional lizard lunge here, sending the hips forward, adding in that quad stretch. Walk the right hand just a little forward, flatten the palm. Bend the right knee, open that left hand towards the left and back. Shoulder blades towards each other, opening the heart up towards the sky and breathe. Resistance, foot into the hand, hand pulls into the foot and breathe. I'm thinking about all the points of contact with the ground. We're pushing away from the earth. Almost like you were gonna push and launch yourself up off your mat, but we're obviously not gonna do that. <laughs> Just that feeling of energy up and away. Good. Release the twist. Take your left hand down to the ground and settling into this lizard lunge. Maybe the forearms come down. Maybe the forehead rests towards the ground. Just about five breaths in this one. back up onto the palms transition slow into that pigeon pose foot going over to the other side dropping the knee slowly to the left supporting that left hip however you need if you need and again we'll be in this one for a little bit longer so do adjust as you need here Settling either down to the forearms or all the way flat. See if you can rest the head in any way using props or your hands. Gentle activation, left leg is pressing into the earth. Shoulders relaxed. When you're ready, let's come on back up to the palms and slowly work your back knee in until you're able to get back into that tabletop position. And again, just kind of giving yourself some little hip sways back and forth, side to side. Hmm. All right, and from here, we're just about out of time. So we'll start to head into our final resting pose. However, you're able to find your way slowly onto your back, extending your legs down the mat. And of course, if you need anything for support here, please feel free to add any supportive props. or any blankets that you might need. 
and come to lie flat on the back or any other closing posture you prefer. Arms by your sides, rest the palms, let the eyes close. As we lay on our Shavasana, feeling our backside press into the earth. And regardless of if you're in any other posture to close, just letting yourself have this time to release the practice. Breathing in through the nose. And exhaling out the mouth. Letting go. Feeling calm. Feeling rested. And feeling strength. And slowly let your breathing just come to any natural rhythm. On your next breath, make it nice and big. Breathe in again through the nose. And big out breath through the mouth. Wiggle your toes and fingers. Roll yourself over to one side, bending your knees in towards your chest. Nice and slow, draw yourself back into seated for just a final few breaths to close our practice together. As you sit up nice and tall, rest your palms on the knees. <sighs> Maybe let some exhales out the mouth as you sigh and release everything. Whenever you're ready, let your eyes open. As always, thank you both so much for joining me. Namaste.